perfect. So we just got a few minutes to go. I think there are a few people also now logging in, which is great. Um, I'm hoping also we'll get more colleagues from Asia. Um, thanks, Bruce. We have a really packed schedule today. Um, and, and we're going to try to be as on time as possible. Um, because, yes, <laughs> we are very punctual that way. We'll um, be here all night if we're not. <laughs> we are. We have. Um, I think we got like 12 and a half hours to this year for practitioners day. Last year we went on for, we had 10 hours last year with about 20 presentations. So we're upping the game a little bit. Um, and we have um, 22 different sessions um, starting now until um, well, 12 and a half hours later. I mean, please do join or drop in as, as you join, as you have time during the day. Um, it's going to be like a marathon for Bruce, um, who's helping us organize this whole day. Um, so pace yourself. All right, cool. And with that, um, Ash and Annika, I'm going to hand over to you. Um, so you have an extra minute to just get going. Thank you. Thanks, Juan. And uh, I think Ash is going to share her screen. And um, so my name is Annika, and I'm presenting with my colleague Ashri. And we are part of the IOM Global CCM support team. And we are very excited to have the first session early morning, or some of you maybe afternoon. And we are equally really excited that we are uh, presenting the new CCM case studies 2020 today. And uh, the collection has just been finished and you can download it from the CCM uh, resource page. And I will paste the link uh, where you can download it in, uh, in a minute. So uh, it's been in a massive effort. It's been such a great contribution this year uh, for 2020. Uh, so many CCM practitioners that, uh, to write up their projects, their experience, their reflections on their work. And uh, so, I mean, first of all, there's just a really warm thank you to everybody uh, for this amazing effort and commitment to, to share their best practices, to, to share their learnings, uh, share, uh, also share their challenges, um, because often we learn from them uh, the most. And, um, but we have um, had a really right contribution this year. And it's, uh, it's really been um, astonishing. So the 2020 um, edition is, um, is comprised out of four chapters. Um, and you can see here on the slides, you know, we have, a, um, it stands within the tradition of collecting case studies with the CCCM, uh, which started in 2014. Uh, moved on to 2016 was another one. And then in 2019, uh, which spanned a three years a period from 2016 to 19. And now we are at 2020 with uh, four new chapters. And it's very much within this spirit of learning by doing that this has been uh, done, this project. And we hope, of course, it will continue um, very much. And um, the, the chapters uh, at the top, can you go back uh, one second? Sorry, Ash, sorry. Um, is, um, the, the topics we are spanning is really a very wide range of topics. And, and that's very much within the CCM spirit of being a cross-cutting sector um, and really having to uh, work within such a wide range of um, topics. So in 2019, we had uh, site management support we had preparedness, we had area-based and uh, mobile approaches. And in, in this year's case study, we have, um, again, four chapters on participation, the uh, capacity building uh, with a subsection on localization, camp management and camp coordination. And then we have put lots of effort of trying to also start this discussion on environment. And I think here you can see the link to where you can download it. So 17 case studies for 2020. You can see here on the slides, uh, mainly Asia and Africa, 
um, region that at the moment have contributed um, and um, from, from a really big wide range of displacement contexts and, um, and programming. So this is all as like a bigger backdrop around the case studies and we hope this project will continue um, in different forms in different ways. And um, I'll hand over to Ash to give you a little bit more of the detail about this year's work. Hi everyone. Uh, so we want to start with basically telling you how this edition is different from the other publications. Annika did touch on it initially, but I'll go deeper into it. Basically, the chapters, as she mentioned, are structured according to themes that are related to CCCM, such as participation, capacity development, camp management and coordination, and environment and sustainability. A huge difference in this edition is how the response and the adaptation to camp, camp CCCM with the COVID-19 response. And we also made sure that we had references to the CCCM standards that was presented last week by Jennifer. And um, as you can see, the link is here, so you can access that on the CCCM website as well. Each chapter is unique in its own way. As you can see, it's related to all the different standards. Um, there are different, we have five really great case studies in the participation case, uh, case study. Uh, beginning with the Women's Participation Project in Bangladesh, which I believe our colleague Ingrid will be presenting on right after this session, so that's great. And the case study highlights how the women communities have expanded and adapted to the COVID-19 response and how, and how the women's community also took a forefront response um, role in this pandemic as well. Um, and then we have the capacity building chapter, which you know we have um, some really great case studies there as well. Um, I think I want to highlight the one from Indonesia, which is a great case study. It is the first online CCCM localization training that was piloted with national NGOs and the Ministry of Social Affairs over the period of six weeks. And a great thing about this case study too, it's been translated to the local language of Bahasa Indonesia. So when you access this case study in the publication, you will see a version in Bahasa too, which is really cool. Um, and the third chapter, we have camp management and coordination, which again, we have some really great case studies from Chad, Somalia, Nigeria, and Yemen, all of them related to the CCCM standards again. And um, we have some great, um, for example, the case studies demonstrates how the different agencies supported displacement, displaced populations through relocation, returns, and integration processes, such as sustaining care and maintenance space. This is demonstrated in the Yemen case study. And the case studies also showcase the application of targeted methods to ensure the needs and priorities of the affected populations are met. Um, and finally, we have the environment case study, which is um, quite exciting. I believe this case, study of uh, this project was also presented during the environment session last week um, from our working group, which is quite uh, exciting. So with the context that most of us work in, there are natural disasters and environmental degradation that affects both displaced and host community. This case study shows how essential it is for CCCM to ensure coordination and collaboration, not just with national, but local authorities and, have, and how jointly led programs can lead to addressing crucial environmental challenges such as deforestation. So this case study is really cool as well. And I really hope that all of you will enjoy reading. I think we have a total of 18 case studies or 17, yeah. <laughs> but it is, every case study is unique in its own way. It showcases some really great best practices and lessons learned and challenges as well. And I think it's great for us as practitioners to learn from it and perhaps as well as adapt and see how we can use it in our own context as well. So one question we want to ask you is, what is next for the case studies? You know, should we do video interviews next? Should we do a podcast? Should we do online, like an online platform? You know, would it be helpful if we translated each case study into the local language or context, we really want to hear your opinions and your views. So please do write in the chat or email us at case studies at cccmcluster.org. We would love to hear your views and um, 
get your interesting projects ready for next year's case studies publication as well. We will be contacting you soon about that. Um, if you have any questions, please do let us know. I think we have a few minutes to answer, answer them as well. We may be slightly having biased comments um, here. Yes, I'm so glad to write this uh, podcast. I think there were also some nice ideas for names already floating around. CCCM podcast, I think that's a great idea. That's something we definitely wanted to do as well. But of course, with time constraints this year, we couldn't manage to do that. But I think a podcast is a great idea too. Um, we should link them to, oh yeah, that's a good idea too. Um, what's interesting for this publication, as you can see in the link, um, each chapter, there's an introduction with the standards and how these standards link to the each each theme and corresponding case studies as well. So I think that's really cool, especially with the launch of the case studies and, sorry, the launch of the standards and now the case studies as well. So it really interlinks really well. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my slides now. Yeah, I can see also a comment of linking them to the CCM training material. That's also a really great idea. Yeah, from Jen. Jen yeah. Podcast so link. Nice. Ah. Well, we might have some, uh, you know, companion projects coming from the ideas that you provided. So keep them coming. We're definitely happy to hear um, so many great ideas coming in. I can see a comment coming in here from Kate about consolidating uh, best tools or best practice and SOPs from the countries on, on the CCM platform, I mean, CCM website as a platform. Yes, that was discussed in 2019 with trade, isn't it? And um, it's also really still on the, on the cards and definitely a really good idea. Yeah. So I guess from us, that's our presentation. We wanted to make it short and sweet and of course share the beautiful photos from each context as well, but go to the link. I'm gonna share it again and check out these case studies because they are all really interesting and they all have beautiful photos as well. And um, I think we can learn a lot from our fellow TCC and practitioners all over the world as well. So thank you so much uh, for having us as your first session. <laughs> This Thank you. A great day. Thank you so much. And thank you even for finishing a little bit early. Um, I see the comments around consolidating tools and SOPs from different countries as, um, for, as a common platforms. Um, I believe we have already a number on the website, Brian. Yeah, so at the moment, um, we have the resources section on the website and uh, each country page has uh, some of the kind of main resources for, for each place. Um, there's also the cap management toolkit is available. Uh, I'll share the links in the chat in a while. Um, we don't have anything at the moment that's like an in-depth kind of community of practice. We do have something internally within IOM, um, but yeah, we, we haven't made um, yeah, we haven't worked on a kind of community of practice, I uh, think, for sharing SOSPs from a, a cluster perspective yet, but uh, well noted on that. It's something we should look into. It's very true. And I, and I think we're quite, uh, you know, a rich kind of source of resources. And I think the discussions over the past week also talk about how, um, you know, like, it's also very much context specific and, uh, and I think each country then develop and adapt, I think, past tools. And I agree, I think so far we often do it by like, you know, passing from person to person. It's a bilateral ask, you know, you reach out to people you know and go, do you have this tool? Um, and, and, you know, if you have any tips for uh, what I need to watch out for, for adapting it. I think one thing Jennifer is working on or has been working on this year also is really interesting is um, I think a guide on how to adapt training packages. Um, and, and I hope that maybe in next year's Practitioner's Day, um, she's gonna be sharing that with us. 
as well. Um, but I think, thank you so much, Annika and Ash and, and other people in, in the team who've been working to pull together the case studies for 2020. And I think it's been a challenging year for all of us. Um, and I think I can't thank uh, all of you enough um, for those who submitted and contributed and commented. Um, I think it's, it's a really strong basis for us to build up uh, the community of practice. Um, and, and we're definitely gonna look at how to better share or have this as a common resource um, for everyone to use.